Hi there, my name is Mina from Clever Journey and today we are going to talk about the hidden games of Sri Lanka, solo female traveling and the inspiring life of a globetrotter. I want to introduce you to my guest. Hi, how are you? Hi, hello everyone. I'm Elenia, I'm from Italy, I live in Milan and hi 28 and uh, I'm a hardcore traveler. That sounds crazy, I'm so interested to, ex to explain more about your life and your traveling experiences. So where are you right now? Right now I'm in Italy. I oh, came, nice. Yeah, I came back last week from Sri Lanka, so mm -hmm. that's a few days here and I'm trying to, you know, get day by day, uh, yeah, starting again with job and all my things. So yeah, it's a little bit hard, but I'll oh, do it. I can feel it. Do you know what helps a lot to get back to the roots, back to home? Is there one tip you can share with us? Like, <laughs> is it with the hour? I think Sri Lanka is about a couple of hours before Europe. So yeah, does it take a lot of sleep for you to get back home? Uh, I mean, right now it's just three hours and a half. Okay. So it's not too much. And yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was a little bit hard to start again with the job and maybe wake up early and also the dead leg and so on. Uh, but yeah, I have a tip. So when I came back to a trip, most of the time I'm searching and organizing another one just to be, yeah, you know, just to be focused on my things, but I know that I have a goal and I have another trip. So I'm more excited and doing things with more energy because I know that in a few days I will leave again. Oh, that's a perfect idea. So as soon as you know, I have to go back home, you should think about which goal could be next, which, which destination could be next and booking. So you yeah. have a goal much easier to come back home and be back to work and stuff like that that's a really good idea and yeah. let me ask you how did you get the idea of traveling to Sri Lanka why Sri Lanka uh, actually it was in my bucket list for so long and actually when I travel I prefer to travel to most uh, remote and wild destination I really love adventure so yeah I choose for a destination more remote let's say and uh, i went to thailand the the last year in december and i spent one month and then i say okay i want to come back to asia because i think it's beautiful and sri lanka was on my bucket list and i say okay maybe that's the right time to to visit sri lanka and yeah it absolutely worth it and absolutely exceed my expectation and again because i really love nature i really love to feel in contact with nature and sri lanka is an incredible country with a lot of different landscapes you can see jungle ocean mountains and whatever so it's the perfect destination for anyone who loves nature and just be loose and explore and the adventure yeah you already said it was much better than your expectations so what's the difference between your expectations before and afterward um actually i have um, friends from sri lanka and they told me it was a beautiful country but just to take care because i was alone and yeah for sure i'm a woman traveling alone and maybe sri lanka was not the best country for traveling alone for a woman so um, i was a little bit cared about that and a little bit in anxiety before my my trip but later i absolutely have to say is absolutely safe and i never never just feel afraid from something people are super welcoming super kind and that's exceed my expectation because i was afraid and i was planning to go just in the most tourist places because i was afraid to just to travel alone and later i started trip and i started to visit the country and i felt absolutely safe so uh, i started to visit the most remote places as well and 
I imagine Sri Lanka as a beautiful country because every time I travel, I'm planning the, the, the trip by my home and I check all the places I want to visit and I saw a lot of pictures, you know, to now, nowadays we are full of pictures on Instagram by travel bloggers and wherever. So yeah, I saw pictures and I say it's, it's amazing. But when you see it, it's, it's incredible. I mean, you can, you can realize you are here and you are watching for the jungle or the beautiful and the wonders Sri Lanka have. Oh, wow. So where did your trip start? You st you, I think you flew to Colombo, the main yeah. city of Sri Lanka. And how was your route? Which city was next? Yeah, I flew to Colombo. Actually, the direct flights start in, from Milan to Colombo, or maybe they stop in uh, Riyadh in Saudi Arabia. And then I start from Colombo and was going to the south. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, did like a round trip for across the country, starting from the south, Mirisa, Veligama, that's the best place for surfers. So yeah. I did one. Yeah, I did one week of surf class and was amazing. Uh, yeah, I explored the south, all the beaches of the south are most, let's say, relaxing beaches for people just want to relax and make activities like surf, uh, yakking or uh, whatever. And then uh, I went to the east coast. Uh, to do more safari in the Yala Park. Yala National Park is very beautiful. Also, if you want to spot leopards, that's... Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, so I saw two and I'm very, very lucky because it's not easy to spot them. So it was amazing and a lot of fun and any kind of animal. And I really love animals, so it was beautiful. And then I went to the north, I mean, most center uh, to Sigiria and Dambulla and yeah other countryside over there and my last my last destination was Trincomalee. Uh, actually I didn't plan to go there because it was far from the other city and also a lot of people say to me no don't don't go there because uh, yeah there are not tourists and it's like a desert countryside and but was the maybe the most beautiful place I saw with Sri Lanka. Trinko Malay is on the east coast on the north and it's beautiful. They are paradise beaches. Yeah I mean no not a lot of tourists so you can enjoy the culture and the locals and it's very beautiful. And then I came back to Colombo, visit just one day in Egombo and was also Besak. It's a typical holiday over there. It's a, a Buddhist holiday. So yeah, just enjoyed the last days in Colombo. Oh wow. So you went to a spot where people said to you before you shouldn't go there alone. And yeah. how what was in your mind when you decided to go there, even if people told you before you should not go there by yourself? Yeah, actually it was I think the first time in my life I was a little bit afraid. A little mm -hmm. bit uh, because yeah, I travel a lot of time alone and since many years I'm, I'm doing it and never never I felt scared about traveling I mean traveling is the best thing you can do and also traveling alone for me uh, I really love it and this was the first time I was scared because friends of mine told me that was a little bit dangerous so I trust them because they are friends so I said, okay, maybe this time I have to be careful and take care about about stuff and about what's around me. And yeah, I was scared. I was scared then to say I have to avoid some places or I have to meet someone in to meet people and maybe ask to older people to do things together, you know. And then again, I mean, I flew to Colombo. I started my first day and I met a lot of pe people from Sri Lanka. They're super kind, super lovely, super welcoming. And it's not true. It's, it's dangerous because they 
try all the time to help you and they ask it to you if you are spending a good time yeah they try to help you in every manner they that they can and also they live for uh, for tourists you know that that's a poor country and the tour is very important for them so they try all the time to take care about tourists and they, they don't want to to cheat you or to maybe just sell things and nothing more. They are all the time asking you, are you okay? Most of the time I gave them my, my telephone number, just for example, to book safaris or whatever. And then the day after they were, they were asking me, are you okay? Do you need something? Please let me know if you reach the other, the other destination and if if you are safe and whatever you need, just ask me. They are very, very welcoming and very warm hearted. Yeah, absolutely. And another thing I, I want to say, it's fine to be, to be scared sometimes. I mean, it's an, a remote country, a poor country, totally different from Europe. So uh, it's right. There are more, let's say, dangerous things, you know, uh, just the, the nature, the, the, the jungle, be, being alone and explore the jungle or the ocean or whatever, climb mountain. And there are not a lot of installations. So yeah, absolutely. It's not safe like Europe or let's say quite safe like like Europe and but again people will help you so when I'm scared about something and actually this was the first time I was scared about a trip and it's very strange I always say there is a sentence I say to myself and I repeat to myself when I'm, I'm afraid or I'm scared of something and I say, do it. And if you are scared, do it scared. And that's absolutely right. Because I was in the airport and I was saying, oh my God, I'm afraid. I don't know what will happen. Yeah, I'm alone. And I was repeating to myself this sentence and it helped to me a lot. Mm -hmm. Just do it. And you are scared. It's fine to be scared. I learned something because traveling, you you can learn a lot. And I learned that be afraid in the right quantity is safe. I mean, mm -hmm. help you a lot because Vu is not afraid about nothing. And since, since some years, I was the typical person saying all the time, I'm not afraid about nothing. I will travel alone and I'm independent. I don't need anyone and whatever. But be afraid, again, in the right quantity, mm -hmm. say, can help you in some, uh, let's say, moments to analyze what is surrounding you, what it's happen is happening, it can help you to just be smarter. Mm -hmm. uh, a psychologist, uh, a person, I mean, it is very wise. One day say to me, do you think you are smart to be not afraid of, of nothing? And I say, yeah. I'm strong. I mean, I I feel powerful because I'm not afraid of nothing. And she said to me, no, maybe you're stupid. You are not smart uh, enough because again, when you are afraid, you are thinking about what is surrounding you and you are thinking about what is happening. So mm -hmm. yeah, I give you more the possibility to, to think fast and say, okay, what is happening, baby? This is not good, and find a solution. Just escape to this, to this because it's not good. And it, it happened to me a lot of things because I really trust people. I believe in the good all the time, and again, I really trust people. So when I'm traveling, and maybe to people offer to me to I don't know discover a new place or see something new I trust them and just uh, love to let's say just flow 
you know. But sometimes it happened to me that also I found people, yeah, they, they were not too, too good. And I had to, to think fast and say, okay, that's not right. I have mm-hmm. to find something to avoid this um, this moment, you know. So mm-hmm. just do it. If you are scared, do it scared yeah. and yeah be afraid sometimes can save you is there a situation you remember when your intuition was right for a case where you should not trust somebody so is there a situation you remember which was like my gut feeling or my intuition says no and afterwards my intuition was right do you yeah. remember a situation like this yeah I, i'm very empathic person mm-hmm. and in my day by day it happened to me to just think maybe I trust people but yeah I'm not very confident with someone mm-hmm. I have the, the, the capacity I'm be able to fast think and say okay this person maybe don't have I mean good ideas or or something else so Yeah, traveling, uh, it happens to me, for example, in Jordan. Mm-hmm. Um, Jordan is beautiful, but sometimes you have to take care because it's- I don't want to scare anyone, but maybe it's not the safest country to travel alone for women because the culture is different. Most of the time, for example, women can go out starting from the afternoon and in the night if you want to get out you are alone and just surrounding from men and Mm -hmm. yeah it's a beautiful country but I had some troubles let's say and one day I asked it to was a guide I think because other tourists just me to to write him right. yeah I wrote him because I wanted to cross the border and um, go to Israel and I was waiting for this guide just to take me and bring me to the border and he started to drive I mean uh, Jordan in in the streets is full of people in cars everywhere but it started to go in most desert street mm-hmm. and I was thinking like uh, I don't know there is something I feel that's not going well mm-hmm. and I was asking him but that's the right way because I think to go to the border to go to Israel you have to take the main street you know also I check it in Google Maps and I say and He, he didn't talk English very well. I don't know, I was a little bit scared and I feel something was not going well. And yeah, I started to uh, made him questions like, do you know he's in the border? I have to show documents or something like that. And I realized that, yeah, really something was not going well because he, he didn't bring me to the border. Oh. So, Yeah, maybe it was the worst thing happened to me traveling. And mm-hmm. there you have to think and find a solution fast, you know. So uh, I started to say to him, I think we are not going the right way. So maybe I can ask someone who was a local I met uh, during my travel. And I say, maybe I have to call him and you can talk with him in your language and maybe he can suggest the right way or just bring me again to the city place. And I call a local that I met traveling, I think was an host from an host where I stayed. And he, he talked Arabic, so he, he told to him to bring me back to the city. Because if not, just he, he called the police uh, yeah. and whatever. But uh, yeah, he was very, let's say, strict in mm-hmm. saying just bring her again to the city and I will bring her, her to the board yeah. and then just I was very very lucky because this person was super kind and convinced mm-hmm. him to uh, bring me again to the city and then uh, I started to cry because it was completely I mean I was dying and say okay that's the last day of my life 
and the other guy, the host from the hostel, bought me like an ice cream because ice cream was in Jordan. Bought me an ice cream and said, no, please don't cry. Are you safe now? I will bring you to the border. You know, here there are a lot of men that are not the good ones. So, but also there are good people. And yeah. finally, yeah, I was very, very lucky and I found an angel that saved me in this case, yeah. And you have been brave enough to think clearly, to find a solution. That's so good. I think that's the main thing you should do in this situation to be like, okay, let's make one step back and think about the situation right now. Which possibilities are there? And but yes. I, you have no choice, you know, just like uh, you have to feel okay or maybe i will die or uh, find a solution to save yourself <laughs> that's that's why i think for anyone maybe your brain uh, started to think fast and to yeah. find something to be safe mm -hmm. oh what an adventure well <laughs> yeah this uh, part <laughs> yeah. was but well, it's a lot to tell afterwards if you're just chilling on the beach i think that's nothing to talk about a lot so if sure. nothing would happen your mindset would not grow so i think travel experiences and let's say growing your mindset is about experience whether whether it's good or not so i think that makes the travel mindset better absolutely i think in the and you are scared and you maybe you think i oh, will not travel alone anymore mm. then uh, i mean y you can you can tell to everyone your experience and it's crazy when i, I mean i tell to people this kind of story they mm. are like you're crazy <laughs> yeah. the best one i don't know how do you do it but uh yeah just staying relaxing at the beach maybe in this kind of things don't don't happen to you and you just can tell people yeah i was traveling just relaxing at the beach but no that's, fine as well. it's, that's cool it's a good time but sometimes you should go out of your comfort zone even if you're in another country so you can explore way more than just chilling on the beach so, but I think it's a part of it. Do you have a system like how much is relaxing and how much is like exploring and adventure stuff like this? Yeah, actually I'm not for relaxing. Okay. Like my day by day in my daily life, when I'm traveling, I don't like to relax. It's impossible for me. That's why I travel alone because maybe uh, my friends or when I have two people to travel with me, they say, no, Helena, I mean, you are too much. You are a lot of energies and I want to relax sometimes and you are all the time want to exploring and go there and there and there and do things and it's too much. So that's the, the first reason maybe why here I travel alone and I don't really like to relax because when yeah. I other country and I'm relaxing and I'm staying at the beach, I say, okay, I'm staying at the beach, I'm spending time at the beach and there are other thousands of places I can see and maybe mm, I have just one one time it's once in a life i will uh, visit this country so i don't want to spend time relaxing i will relax when i will be at home and let's say i always say i will relax when i, I will die so yeah i like this kind of just to relax i mean it's important okay because maybe it's too much to do like me all the time i mean i wake up super early in the morning and I go to sleep very late in the night and I'm all the time doing things I want to discover and see places and I assume that that's too much for some people but I want to miss anything you know mm -hmm. new country there are a lot of things that uh, i don't know never seen in my life so I just i want to to discover and it's important to relax because obviously you are uh, going out your day by day and just maybe you need to rest sometimes yeah but also it's once in a life maybe so 
yeah, I want to enjoy it 100% and all the time I travel, I give all, mm -hmm. all my energies, all my 100%. I, I always say I came back home and I need another holiday just to rest from, <laughs> the, from the trip. That was my, another, my next question. So how is it for you to realize what you experienced? Is it like I need time at home to talk about it, to look through the pictures you took? Or is it like coming back one day afterwards, you realized everything? How long does it take for you to realize all these adventures? Just a few days. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I have to say, I really love the feeling or uh, that stay at the airport or just relaxing the plane, coming back home and say, okay, I will meet again my friends, my family. I will, talk, I will tell them my experience, my adventure, and I want to share with them all my feelings and how much I'm happy and I'm excited about life, about traveling. And yeah, just tell them all the things happened to me. But maybe it was just a few days. The first day that I met my family and my friends and I started to tell them that was amazing. I show the pictures and so on. And then I'm just ready to another one and I want to escape again and just go out going out to uh, my comfort zone. That, that's, that's something uh, I really need. I really need because again I'm a person full of energies just staying at home working on doing I, I do a lot of things in my daily life as well but sometimes I'm getting bored and I really need to get out the comfort zone and explore and see and learn by traveling so it's absolutely amazing to come back home and think one of the best things to uh, traveling is uh, just knowing there is someone at home that's it's waiting for you and that's beautiful because I'm very lucky I'm surrounded by amazing people all the time right me uh, we miss you we really love you and you are doing crazy things we are very happy you are enjoying life but we miss you you know and, and that's amazing and I like it but yeah again it lasts just few days I really need them in my life I really need to share with them all my adventures but again uh, just in a few days maybe just one month and I need again to, to try I feel that so you already mentioned your family and friends and why are you are traveling? How is your contact? Are you like FaceTiming every day or is it better for you to have this distance and tell them once a week what happens? Yeah. How much do you need? Yeah, actually, I think my mother suffered it because when I travel, I have to disconnect. Yeah. And again, I really love my family. I really love my friends. And uh, I assume that it's complicated for them uh, to understand my point of view and to understand that I don't want to talk with them day by day or uh, just share uh, my daily trip with them, you know? Um, yeah, I assume it's complicated to understand, but yeah again i'm very lucky because they understand me and i don't like to share all the things during the travel because i want to uh, feel this feeling to tell them all when i come back mm -hmm. it's like to uh, remember again the trip and my adventure because if i am all the time writing you i see this and i do this and it happened to me this and other things you come back home and you have nothing to to tell them so i love just to disconnect it's i mean uh, basically a day by day i i say to my mom i'm safe don't yeah. worry okay and whatever sometimes my friends write to me and i uh, oh, again i say yeah i'm i'm safe don't worry or i send some pictures but not a lot mm -hmm. uh, also in instagram for example in the social network i don't like to share 
all the things I'm doing. I want just to keep something, just keep something to tell later to my friends, to my, my family. But it's um, a way to disconnect and stay all the time telling people I'm doing this, this and this or sharing the social network. Uh, maybe you, you miss or you skip the focus that it's disconnect to uh, go out your comfort zone to just enjoy it because you are all the time with your phone or maybe calling your friends and doing FaceTime. Maybe you are not enjoying a lot. I uh, really like to and I love to stay deeply with locals and share things with other travelers. And then when I come back home, I will tell them all. Yeah. Oh yeah, many people who are traveling or starting to travel are scared to be really lonely or feel lonely. So what would you say? Is it easy to find friends or travelers? Or is it like you can choose if you want to travel by yourself or you want to meet somebody? Sure, you can decide. And I want to say it's not easy to travel alone, you know, because <laughs> it can seem from how oh, I can can talking or sometimes people say uh, yeah traveling alone is amazing and it is i agree but it's not easy mm -hmm. you have a lot of moments when you feel alone and you are asking yourself why i did it mm -hmm. i mean you are obligated yourself to stay alone and i say you are not alone you are staying with yourself that's more complicated, you know, so it's not easy. Sometimes mm -hmm. you feel alone and say, I mean, why I decide to, to do it? That's amazing. And more, uh, more, moreover, when you are maybe seeing something amazing and you are alone and say, oh my God, I want to share this with someone and just to comment and say, oh, are you looking at that? That's amazing. Mm -hmm or whatever so sometimes you feel alone sometimes you feel alone sometimes you have to stay with yourself and uh, you know with your thinkings and that's not easy it's <laughs> not at all but you can decide as you told you can decide because we are very like gen like generation because uh, we are uh, let's say a backpackers generation a generation of travelers so we are lucky because nowadays a lot of people are changing uh, their mind and they are traveling so if you want to meet people you can because sometimes people say to me how do you do it you travel alone and then you post all the time stories with a lot of people and you are doing friends all over the world are you doing are you doing and just if you want it you can do it but i mean the, the first way is to stay in hostels mm -hmm. hostels for backpackers it's full all over the world yeah there you can meet a lot of people and then you can decide for example there are a lot of activities so most of the time the hostel post to you and say do you want to do this with older with a group with old people and you can say yes i will share this activity with a group of people or not i want to do this alone you know so i think you you can find a balance for example, in my trip to Sri Lanka, I was alone and actually was an exercise to me oh, because sometimes I searching to be alone, but later I don't be able to stay, to stay alone because I'm very friendly, I'm very talkative, mm -hmm. I'm all the time meeting people. It's impossible to, to be alone. So I say, okay, this time, because I did the, the, the same in Thailand and then I met thousands of people uh, i did a lot of friends and was amazing because i think one of the best thing to travel is meet people meet people and doing friends and i'm very lucky because right now i can say that i have friends all over the world and when i travel 
people just uh, send a message to someone and uh, say, I'm visiting your country, you know, and I'm feeling like I have a home in all parts of the world. And that's amazing. And so I say, okay, this time I have to be quiet and <laughs> just spend more time alone. And then, uh, I mean, I was all the time surrounding by people and I met a guy who was very, very nice. And we did most of the trip together. And uh, yeah, maybe the only time I stayed alone, I decided to stay alone. For example, in Trinco Malé was where um, there are not a lot of tourists and I say, okay, this, that's the time to spend some time alone. Mm -hmm. And what again because I was spending all the trip with other people enjoying the beautiful escapes of Sri Lanka and doing activities all the day so I was like okay now I'm alone in a desert countryside what I will do and you have a lot of time to think to think about your life and uh, that that's not easy that's not easy but yeah uh, i mean i always say when you are traveling alone you are never never alone i'm trying all the time to do it to, to be alone and i don't <laughs> know if you stay alone if there is always a possibility to meet someone that's so nice so you but stayed the most time in hostels or yeah is it, yeah yeah, I mean, again, when I want to meet people, I know that going in Austria is the best way to, to meet people and also to just be safe because they are all the spectators, all the travelers that understand you if something happened and whatever, you are the possibility, they offer to you a lot of activities. So if you want to do all the time something, it's the best way to, to travel alone, I think. And then other times when I want to spend some time alone or so it's not easy. You spend a lot of energies and staying in hostel and dormitory is not easy. So you have to share uh, beds with other people and it's noising and whatever. So sometimes if you travel for a long time, for example, I was traveling for one month, sometimes I, I needed to just take yeah. a private room and say, okay, tonight I want to sleep and I want to rest because yeah, traveling for one month in a remote place is not easy. So uh, most of the time I stay in hostel and when I, I feel I need it, just take a private room and stay alone. That makes sense. Yeah. So, but if you are really alone, like not in a hostel and you don't have the possibility to meet someone or you don't want to meet new people because as you tell us, it's not that easy. It's socializing can be really hard and stressful. So if you decide to stay alone and there is a situation where you feel lonely, do you have something what helped you that you don't feel lonely again? Actually, I don't know how it happens, but uh, for example, in Trincomale as well, there weren't not hostels and there weren't tourists. Most of the tourists were families and it was not easy to find someone. But I think there are... A Nowadays, there are a lot of ways to searching someone. For example, I don't know if you know it, but there are a lot of tap groups for mm -hmm. backpackers. And there was one just dedicated to Sri Lanka. And I spent three days alone and I was enjoying it because I was traveling all the time with people. So I said, okay, these are my last days and I want to stay alone. But it lasts just two days and then I needed to, to just find someone, meet someone. And yeah, I wrote to this group if uh, someone was in Trinco Malaya as well and just to take a beer or enjoy the beaches and whatever. But when I'm completely alone, yeah, maybe that's the moment where I share most with my friends or my family. Yeah, for example, I was all the time in uh, during my trip in Sri Lanka, uh, not sharing a lot in the social media because I was all the time doing things, meeting people, talking with people, and and I didn't have a lot of time to do it. So when I'm 
I, I'm alone. Uh, I try to share more with them to, for example, was the first time I called my friends, uh, did a FaceTime with my mom and I share more in the social media because, you know, you can interact with other people and it's, uh, I think it's a way to not feeling a lot alone. That helps a lot to you know if there is somebody at home and you can reach them whenever you want to. That's yeah. so, that's amazing. So in general, how do you travel? Do you already plan every stop you're going to take? Or is it like I live from one day to the other and just uh, go with the flow? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think go with the flow is the best way. Yeah, I mean, mostly, uh, most of the time when I, I'm traveling alone, when I'm traveling with friends, I try to organize all the trip. Also, I really like to planning things, organize the trip. I think it's one of the best things um, of the trip. We talked about being lonely, being solo traveling and now planning your trip that planning can be exciting as well so looking forward to all the stops you have in your mind and about sri lanka how long was the trip in channel it was 25 days okay yeah 25 and actually i was saying like um i love to plan things but when i'm traveling alone i I don't organize nothing and just I like to go with the flow and I always take uh, the the flights round trip and no more maybe only the hostel for the first night and then yeah go with the flow because you know when you are traveling uh, you can meet people and have suggestions tip about what is better to visit or to see or sometimes if you plan something and you say okay I have 25 days in Sri Lanka and I want to travel across the country and see this and this and this and this yeah absolutely uh, it's good to have a plan uh, but sometimes for example you visit a place and you feel that you just you want to stay there more spend there more time and Stay there uh, more days, for example. Yeah, I planned to stay in Trincomalee just one day and then I spent one week because uh, I really liked it and I was feeling like I was in peace and I really liked the feeling and the atmosphere. So I say, okay, I mean, I will skip all other things uh, I was planning to see and just go with the flow and uh, enjoy this feeling. So you can plan it. And if you are all the time planning things like book at hostels or Every, or everything you don't have the you have to let's say follow the plan because you have the hostel booked and whatever so i prefer to just buy the flights and then go with the flow also if you if you like to talk with locals they will give you a lot of tips and you can discover places that maybe you can check it in the in internet because nowadays we are lucky because you can check all the internet all the places there are not remote places because now tourists are uh, all over the world they are everywhere <laughs> yeah Sure. But sometimes if you just uh, talk with locals and you like to go deeply in the culture, you can discover also places that are not so much spotted, but are beautiful as well. So I prefer just to go and see and again, go with the flow. So when you started this trip to Sri Lanka, you already knew that you will fly back at the day XYZ. Uh, yeah, this time, yes, because for sure I'm I'm working. So, mm -hmm. yeah, unfortunately, I can't like stay for indefinitely time. But this year I want to, to do it. Maybe I will do it again in to Asia. We'll um, plan, I mean, round trip without taking the flight to coming back home because I want to feel the, the feeling to don't have a date of of come back and just enjoy and and see and where we spend more time. Yeah. 
yeah, spend more time and like just feel how, how it is to living for maybe for a time for um, yeah, for a time in a in a place. So I mean, that's different from having a date of return. So would you say 25 days? I think 25 days was it in Sri Lanka, wasn't it? Many people say it's too much. Okay. Yeah, but mm, it depends. For mm -hmm. example, again, if you want to, uh, I mean, if you spend just two weeks, maybe it's enough to see the most spotted places, the most important things of the country. I think in all the countries, mostly like that. Uh, two weeks are enough to see the best places and all the tourist places. Uh, mm -hmm. But again, if you want to enjoy and stay in one place for uh, more time, for sure you have to uh, have more more time to spend in the country. For example, yeah, spend one week in Trincomalee or spend, um, spending one week in the south, maybe it's too much, but mm -hmm. if you want to do activities, you need more time. And also think that it's really worth it to spend more time in Sri Lanka. Many people stay just one week or at maximum two weeks, uh, but there are a lot of things to, to see, to do, and it's absolutely worth it to spend more time. And I recommend to stay more than two weeks just for enjoy uh, deeply the, the country. And for example, Again, I really love the nature, doing activities like surf, like safaris, like whale watching or sea animals or whatever. And for this, sometimes you need time because it depends from the weather and it depends, for example, to spot the animals. It depends from <laughs> how much like is you are and whatever. So I think it's a destination for anyone. Because you have all, if you want to stay at beach relaxing, you can do it. If you want to do activities, you can do it. If you prefer the mountain, you have the mountain. If you prefer just like uh, beaches activities, you have a lot. And yeah, I think it's worth it to spend more time. That sounds like a wonderful experience. Now I want to go to Sri Lanka immediately. So this should be the next stop. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing your adventures. Is there something you want to say or tell the people at the last sequence? Just to say that uh, really traveling, it is worth it. It's amazing. It can change your mind, can open your mind. I always say when I come back to a trip that my eyes are full of beauty because really the world is insane. Uh, mm -hmm. There are a lot of wonders that's worth it to be to be seen, and that my my mind is inspired because really you can you can meet people, incredible people that will inspire you, and that's really worth it. Really worth it in your, in your day by day. So absolutely do it if you are not already started. Just do it, starting from something. I mean, just choose a destination and travel because it's the most beautiful thing you can do. And yeah, absolutely. You learn a lot traveling and really, I think that it's a gift from, from God, from the world, from life, whatever you want, but it, it's a gift. Uh, this world is a gift and it's really worth it to to visit it, to see the wonders of this world and just traveling, just do it. Thank you. Is there a channel where we can see what you're doing, where people can follow your next trips? Uh, I mean, ne next one, planning or just uh, I board the flights is Cuba. I will go to Cuba on August. Maybe before I will do some uh, leader trips. Next week I will go to Spain and then to Sicily again. And but the bigger biggest one will be Cuba on August, and then oh. I will return. I will come back to Asia in December to spend uh, 
uh, I told you more times. So I will go to um, Indonesia, I think. Yeah. That sounds good. How is, uh, do you want to share your name on Instagram so people can follow your next trips? Sure. I'm Elenia. I mean, I'll say uh, the spelling. I think we will text it somewhere here, but in, how is your short name that maybe it's in, in our mind if, if we hear it? Okay, it's Ile Coco, and I don't know to say the uh, traits like. Or oh, the line, underline? The li underline, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I will say again Ile Coco, underline. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much for sharing all your amazing trips and have fun. Take care and I will be looking forward to follow your next trips and how you're doing. Ina, you're so kind and hope you're doing well and thank you again 